I'm going to show you how to make one of these stained glass pictures to go in your window and it's really simple and you just need a few simple things so put that aside first of all you're going to need some black card and it has to be the same size as your window pane you're going to need coloured tissue paper a pair of scissors or a craft knife but if children are doing this, this activity I'd recommend scissors a pencil to draw some PVA glue and a paintbrush and a little pot to mix your glue in and that really is all you're going to need so let's get started the first thing you need to do is to cut a piece of thin black card that is exactly the same size as your window obviously if you've got a big window you need a big bit of card but I'm just doing this for a small window pane and once you've got that you have to draw a border all around the edge so let's just mark that out about a centimetre half an inch all the way around the edge and that's going to provide a frame for your design so here I have all the way, drawn it all the way around the edge and then your design is going to go in the centre now this is obviously the reverse so you can draw on this as much as you like so once you've decided on your design just draw it out so I'm going to do a butterfly I think so I'm going to have a body and you can always sort of trace designs and the idea with a stained glass is that everything must sort of connect with this frame so that it doesn't all fall apart and that is not terribly symmetrical but well my butterfly could be flying off the edge couldn't it Now obviously all the lines on the stained glass have to be thick so once you've drawn that sort of go around them all make sure you can see what I mean so that they are like thick black lines and we do that over all the design making sure everything's touching and then when we come to cut it out it's this area here within the design that we cut out and these are the bits that are going to have the colours in. Now when you cut these out you can use a scissors by pushing a scissors through and then cutting around the edge or you can use a craft knife. If you're going to use a knife it has to be very sharp because you're far more likely to hurt yourself with a blunt knife and you stand up and work towards you on a cutting mat. But if children are doing this I would advise using scissors to cut out these shaded areas and when I plan out a design like this, I will always shade it in in pencil so I can see clearly before I start cutting the bits I need to cut out because it's much easier to cut the right pieces and not to have to change a mistake afterwards. So I'm going to finish drawing my design and then we'll get to cutting out. So this is my design finished now and I can see the areas I want to cut out. And just remember that you just need all these black lines that are going to connect so that it all holds together and provides a framework for your design. So my next stage now is to cut out. So as I say, you can just use the scissors. So if you're going to do that, for example, I'd push the scissors through, which is quite a thick card, do not want to go, there we go. And I'm just starting to cut. When you're cutting, it's always easier to move the paper in the direction you need rather than your scissors. Let's just do this last little bit. And there we are. So you're going to repeat that for the whole design. So I've cut out all the spaces and everything else is connecting so it's all holding together. And obviously the next stage is now to put tissue behind the design so that the colours will glow out in the window. Now I could just grab some tissue paper and then cut it to these shapes and stick it very carefully on the back of this design. 
but that is really tricky, especially if you've got a complicated design. So I'm going to show you something that's going to be a little bit easier than that. So a little word of advice here. Remember, everything is in reverse and we're going to have the tissue behind this. So what I want to do is turn it the right way around and I'm just going to put a little bit of paper, ordinary paper behind. And I am going to trace this design if I can find a pencil. So I'm going to trace it onto a piece of paper just so I can see where all the shapes are. So make sure the whole thing is traced out so that I have a template for the colours. I should also mention, because you're reversing it, if you have any words or letters, remember that when you cut out, they also have to be in reverse. Anyway, I'm just going to finish tracing off this design. I have finished tracing off my design onto the paper, so I'm just going to put my frame aside for a moment because I won't need that for a while. And here I've got my template. And this is quite nice because it means you can think about the colours. So, I don't know, so this actually is going to be sky, so I'm going to put a B for blue wherever I've got the sky, just so that I know that that's where I'm going to put the blue colours. And then I can use other colours inside. I'm not sure what colours I'm going to use yet. And then once you've done that, you're now going to need a sheet of plastic that will fit over that that is bigger than your design. Because mine's quite small, I've just got like a file pocket, but something like this, a big plastic bag, anything plastic and you're going to be able to have to lay it flat so I'm now going to go and get my PVA glue and my tissue paper before I start I'm going to cut my tissue paper up into little pieces about the size of a postage stamp and put them into different color groups because once you start gluing your fingers get sticky and then it's really hard to do this so I've got those all ready to go so I'll move my board around so I've got my design with my plastic sheet over the top, that's the important bit, you don't want to be gluing down onto your design. And then I've got just some PVA glue and I've mixed it up in a little yoghurt pot with about half and half water so that it's a, the consistency of a thin cream. And then we're ready to go. You might want to tape your plastic down onto your your sheet before you start just so, so it doesn't move. So I've got a little bit of masking tape here. I'm just going to tape it top and bottom so that it holds in place. Oops, I'm knocking my camera about here. Let's just put that up there so it holds in place. And then we start gluing. So let's start in the middle area where this body is. And it doesn't matter if the little bits and pieces go outside the area. So I'm just going to put some glue down where I want my tissue. And I think I might make that red. And I'm going to just glue that down. Maybe another bit here. So I'm trying to fill in the areas in between. That might that bit that way up. So I fill out all of the body. But I actually I'm going to put some yellow on. So you can overlap. And when that dries, that should look slightly more orangey. I hope. And a little bit of red down there. So that's the body. So you just keep putting glue down so it's all stuck down and all the edges are stuck. Now maybe I will do some blue up here for the sky. So this is all blue up here. So in fact, even though I've got black lines going across, this whole area here is blue. And you'll see tissue paper is not colour fast, so I've got some um, red coming out of that, but we can try to avoid that as much as possible. It doesn't really matter. So I'm just now going to layer up pieces of different colour blue for the sky and carry on like this until I've covered the whole sheet. Once you've covered your whole design with your coloured tissue paper, and you can see it looks very rough and ready at the moment, but I promise you it will work, you now have to be really patient and let this dry completely. And once it's totally dry, it will peel off the plastic backing. But don't try to peel it off before it's dried, otherwise it will all just tear. So 
I'm going to put that aside for a day and then I'll come back. My tissue collage is now dry and I can peel it off the plastic backing. And if I position my frame over the top, I can just adjust it. You will see just by putting those outlines on, it separates out the colours and looks really effective. So you can just move it around till you get the position you like. And it doesn't matter if there's little bits that are showing sort of from other areas, that won't really notice. So you play around till you find it's right and then just put a little bit of glue or double sided tape on the back of your frame and you can glue that down and that's your finished stained glass window ready to display in your window. So I'm just going to put a bit of Pritt stick on the back. Just along each of these little black lines. So there you are, a little stained glass to go in your window. And I think by you putting the PVA on it, it makes it slightly more luminous than if it's just tissue paper. And it, it glows like real stained glass. So have fun with that. Um, bye.